Being wrong is annoying. It depends on why you're wrong. Um. It's annoying, but fun sometimes. Being wrong can be a very exciting thing. Um. That is true. Like I said, number two is undefined. Number four is negative four, two, negative 32, 41. Whoa, one more time. No. What? Negative 14, two, negative 32, 41. Woo number six was negative 30, 50. Number eight is undefined. Number 10 is 26, 14, negative 31, negative 22, negative nine, negative nine. Number 10 was? Yeah, what did I say? Mm -hmm. I don't either. Uh, number 12A, uh, the matrices would be the row matrix 165, 110, 239. And then the matrix 25, The it's a uh, 3 by 2 matrix, 25, 28, 32, 17, 18, 12. And the answer to number B is... $22,955. What questions do y'all have? What is 8 undefined? Uh, because it is a 2 by 3 times a 2 by 2. And 3 does not equal 2. Does that make sense? Well, will when you see it, maybe. Good question. Other questions, though? Smirky face. <laughs> You're going to ask a what? A bagel with cream cheese. What is number four again? Uh, two by two matrix, uh, negative 14, two, negative 32, and 41. Wait, so you say the one this way first and then this way? Row call. Yeah, so it would be a three by two. Against a two by two. Row by column. Two by three times a two by two. On eight? On eight. What's sitting there on, on the page that I'm seeing? Machine. Hmm. Uh, negative eight seven four. Yes. Yeah, it's row by column. So two rows, three columns. Are you still? Are you still? Mm -hmm. What you got it now? I was like, okay, this is the row. There's three across. There's, there's three row. columns. <laughs> the way you the way you were thinking of kind of I was, like, okay, was row by row, kind of, <laughs> sort of, but redefining row. <laughs> I was thinking, I was counting what was on the column. What was on the column. So, mm -hmm. column down there's two columns. That row has that many items. I got you. So, Any other questions on those? Can we just do twirls? Yeah. We can always just do twirls. And then, I don't think we did anything other than the two by two. What? You don't think we did anything other than two by two? Two by two by two by two. And three, watch it over.
I he didn't, he didn't, he didn't he give me the, the it's, that that's one of the weirdest things about the whole thing is he didn't give me the impressions the impression that he was on drugs. Maybe he had a bad. Voice. He did. He, he did smoke. Because I didn't smoke. He smoke. he smoked for sure. <laughs> that's or it was around somebody that's different. Obvious. That definitely happened. I mean, that was for sure. No, he was very strange. He was trying. I, I don't really know quite what was going on. He wanted to talk to a pastor. I was wanting to essentially preach some religion, possibly that he made up. I don't really quite understand. That's what it, it was very. It was very that's, confusing that's because, so he, because, like I say, he never quite put any sentences together. And so I was. I I repeat. I said three times, and I because I when I heard him, and I heard a voice out there. I immediately, of course, went out to. Make sure nobody was dying, you yeah. know, whatever <laughs> else. Yes. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so that that so it's one one part of our our new security plan that we're going to implement um, <laughs> is if you are out there and somebody comes in that you don't don't know, the immediate thing that you do is you come and talk to either Rochelle or me, and and everybody leaves the hallway and comes this way. Oh, that's the yeah. oops. Oh, you know that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's a sad. That's a sad. That's sad. Or that's not reach this point. What? Which is good. No, that's why the law is. That's what I was doing. I had the night shot the other day. good film okay um, so if any of your future selves go back and watch this recording sorry for the weird delay <laughs> Amy spilled her coffee <laughs> hot chocolate um, yeah so if you do have to be in the hallway and somebody that you don't know shows up even if it's a delivery dude also, another piece of po uh, another piece of possibility. I don't think anybody in this class class was any of the people that have done this before. But we are no longer allowing anyone to order food and have it delivered here. Oh, well, Aiden and Ryan. Ryan. What? Aiden and Ryan. On Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Because it makes it harder to control the flow of people. Probably, and this is definitely not an issue in this class, but probably we're not going to allow, allow anybody but students to come in without permission either, including your parents. They can call us if they want to come. Great. You have to, like, 
I don't have a buzzer, which is one of the reasons why it's pro it, it's 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 probably one it's prohibitive and it's and it's kind of an issue is because I don't have a buzzer and I don't have a secretary. So we end up losing time out of teaching to deal with some of these things. But you gotta figure out where the balance is. And so we'll see what happens. Yeah, we could do that would be a cool thing, but that's expensive to add uh near field stuffs what am i doing okay uh so any other questions on your homework assignment now that we dealt with our mer oh we were going to look at 12 right is that what you said you were crying about number 12 gotcha you're great at math you're just behind but you're getting caught up yeah, Rylan is no I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. So looking at number twelve. Uh, the table shows the number of people registered for Christ in the Arts. You were like I've only ever seen you in hoodies, so I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. It's like a joke. That's our hair as well. That's funny because I've never seen you in hoodies. Okay. Now that we're back, number 12 is the <laughs> table shows the number of people registered for aerobics for the first quarter. Um. Uh, Quinn's gym charges the following registration fees by a class, 165 bucks, 11 for 11 class pass, and then $110 for an unlimited pass. Oh, class by class, 165, 11 class by class, 110, unlimited pass, 239. Did it. Yay. Okay. Um, Write a matrix for the registration fees and a matrix for the number of students. So matrix for the registration registration fees is 165, 110, 239. Sweet. Right? And it's going to need to be... Um, it's it in order to to use this. It's kind of a lie, actually. I was gonna say it. It, it, it you could actually do this problem with a it, make it a column matrix instead. You just have to multiply them the other way around. I'll kind of write down what I mean in a minute. Uh, this is kind of it's more of a future thing, so don't stress about it for this problem. But that is the that is the one matrix. And then the other matrix is 35, 28, whoa, 32, 17, 18, and 12. That one's the real easy one, right? That one's that one's just straight up from the turning the table into a matrix. So that's A. That's the answer. Done. Finished. B. How would we do B? Let's see, B says, find the total amount of money the gym received from an aerobics class and step aerobic registrations. So what would we do to figure that out? You'd multiply and add i mean we're we're kind of doing we're kind of summing the matrix essentially right what would we do now what what did you, multiply the matrices each other, right? Good idea. Okay, good. Yes, you do. Roll by column. 
How is that possible? It would make a one by two. That's fact. Because this is a this is a one by three, and this is a three by two, so our resulting matrix will be a one by two. That's a fact. Uh, so what's going to go right here? It is. What you said? Yes. Hold on, I'm not even to that yet. But I, well, actually, I'll go ahead and write it down. Yep. Let me erase my little little thing. 165 times 35. And you said it's what now? 5,775. Okay, good. Now what? 165 times 35 plus what? Um, We're going row by column. Right? Isn't that, isn't that how we multiply matrices? 110 times 32. Three, you said 3,000? Mm -hmm. 3,320. No, 500. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the distributive property. That makes sense, huh? Plus 239 times, 18. 239 times 18, which gives us, are we following? If you're confused, what should you probably do? Ask questions. Ask questions. And highlight is a good, yeah, yeah, that will help you. That will help you stay less confused. True. This one's 4,382. I still hear gears turning in people's brains, but nothing coming out their mouths. So we'll just hope for the best, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you, that. you don't know how I did what, sir? How you cured that gear, gear turning. Teacher powers. <laughs> Mother of pearls. Whoa. You don't like pearls? No. <laughs> 165 times 28. What? Oh, the same order of colors? Because I'm never going to remember that. Okay. Uh, if we were to do that, the old, we would have to change it to a brand new system. And if we want to do that today, I can make that happen. But it's got to be Roy G. Biv because that's the only way I'm going to remember it. That's the only way. Because if it's just random order, I ain't going to remember it. I'm keeping it. Well, do it that way on your own notes and quit yelling at me, goober. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> Uh, what is 5,775 plus 3,520 plus 4,320? It's scared. You have a calculator, don't you? You should. Goober. Yeah, but I'm going ahead and doing this real quick real, since since we started writing it this way. What you said? Why not? Hmm. Thirteen thousand five hundred ninety-seven. Thirteen thousand five hundred ninety-four thousand. Oh, never mind. Oh, you're adding all that to your Yeah. I'm really bad at reading long numbers, so if I did that wrong, that's fine. I'm gonna do the second row. Same. Okay. Seven ninety-seven or four ninety-seven. They said 97. I didn't actually punch it in. Okay, so for the next one, it's 165 times 28, right? And before you ask, y'all should know me enough by now to know the answer to this question, but in case you don't, 
Yes, you may use a highlighter on a test or a quiz. It's um, 4,120. 4,120? No. 4,620. 620. 620. Good idea. Plus, what's the next one going to be? Wait, it's a one more. What? Oh, yeah, this would actually be all of this should have been. I can do that. Yes, yes, this should actually be over here. Right? Sorry, my bad. What? You don't have a cool computer that you're doing your notes on? <laughs> What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> you can thank Ryland for not catching it sooner. Wow. Gosh, wow. Ryland. <laughs> uh, so the next one would be 110 times 17, right? Um, yep. That is um, 1,870. 1,870. Plus 239 times 12, right? Yep. 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 Which would be? A number. Wow. What did I forget? What? A number. 1,868. 1,868. So then when we add all those three together, what number do we get? 9,358. 9,358. So our matrix is 1,300, excuse me, 13,597 and 9,358. Um, in this matrix, what do each one of these numbers represent? You may need to open your book to remind yourself which which uh, column is which. But what do those numbers represent? Aerobatics and then step. Yeah. They, they, the total total price for each. So it says the total amount of money from that and that. So what's the last thing we're going to do for this problem? Add them together. Add them together. 22,000 22,955. What's the units? Because remember, on a word problem, we definitely want units. Dollars. You know what's slightly weird about this year and this, this month is I decided to teach a grace class, right? Yeah. And so far, I taught one grace class. I was out for two weeks, and now we're not having grace the next day. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> well, we never happened the last Friday. Oh, that's right. That's a new thing, isn't it? No. Uh, no, it's it just... It's been a Oh, really? They didn't do it every, 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 every oh, that's... Yeah. But the just canceling it straight up is new, though, right? Yeah. Oh, I guess that's not I yeah. used to do something. Because I'm probably not doing field trips because of COVID or something. I don't know. I, well, I have no idea. Have like 5, Honestly, after the last couple of weeks, I'm not even sad about it. I've got plenty of catching up to do. So, yeah. so it's fine by me. Um, so that's, that's probably it question-wise. Yes? Okay, good. It's 930. Oh, I have another question. Okay, you're going to have to ask it some other time. All right. We're going to learn my favorite thing about matrices today. That they're numbers. D they're, how to find their determinants, and more importantly, how to use their determinants. Because we're going to learn Kramer's Rule. Which is how all the cool kids are solving matrices. None of that. Stop being sleepy. <laughs> you're confused? Is that what you said? Oh, you're good. I'm good.
What is that? 27th. 0127. Okay. Okay. Lesson seven. Lesson seven is, is putting, I'm talking now. Okay. Lesson seven is putting the systems and the matrices together because we are solving systems with matrices, actually. Solving systems. Systems. Yeah, it's fun. Using Kramer's rule. No, I don't use creamer in my coffee. I don't drink coffee. I had a professor one time. He taught, I had him for computer class, which I think I probably would have preferred him for a computer class, but he also taught math. I tutored a lot of his math students. Uh, in college, um, and he would drink a cup of coffee that was probably like six times as big as this, and he would always have it with him, and whatever else. And I had it for a night evening class, and so he had it then. And one of the students one day, he, he had all kinds of weird stuff. He said, uh, uh, "Now you're cooking with Crisco and all kinds of other weird stuff." He was he was a fun professor, um, but he he had his coffee. And one of the students one day said. And, sir, do you, uh, do you drink your coffee black? And he said, do I look like I'm wearing a skirt? And I guess that implied that he drinks his coffee black. I don't know. I guess <laughs> girls don't drink black coffee or something. I don't know. I do sometimes. I don't know. I drink black coffee and I don't wear I, now that I have an espresso machine, sometimes I do drink it with milk. So fancy. <laughs> okay. All right, so first thing we're going to learn is how to find a determinant. Um, this, is, this is an over, overly simplified statement. Guys, when I start talking to the whole class, you shut up. Since I wasn't clear <laughs> earlier, make it abundantly clear is what I'm trying to say. Determinant. Ter. Min and look at that. I was going to spell it right without even looking. Sanity check. Determinant. So you can only find a determinant for square matrices. Square only. I am about tired of these. This thing. I think it's the same issue. I think I need to order some RAM. I don't want to spend money on that right now, but I think that's my biggest problem. Ooh. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Can't I make this little little chart be the RAM? Isn't that a thing? Memory. Did it do it? Nope. You be here. That's fine. Okay. Sorry, y'all. This is not fine. Okay. I'm okay. Maybe. Square only. So a two by two or three by three or four by four, etc. Right? One by one, technically, I guess. The determinant of a one-by-one one matrix would be the value of that number. 
Okay, moving on. <laughs> okay, so it can only be for, for that. So in order to find the determinant, the determinant of this matrix, we're going to use an example of a two by two. You, you, the, say, the steps would be the same for three by three, et cetera, which we're going to do examples of, I believe, in this lesson, or is it next? Yeah, this lesson. Um, if we have the matrix A, B, C, D, it's determinant, first of all, and I alluded to this early, uh, earlier this week on another day, you use straight lines to represent the determinant. Okay, so this is the same as A, B, C, D, the determinant of, okay, first of all. And then what you do is you multiply the diagonals and then subtract them. So in this, in a two by two matrix, that looks like this. So we're, we're going to try to get some sort of regular color scheme, but it's going to be different than what you did. So we're going red. A times D, whoop, if I can write correctly. That's not a technology problem, that's just a brain problem. Minus, now the other diagonals, we go up, which doesn't necessarily matter. Orange. Minus C, to, oh, they actually write B times C, but I'm going to write C times B because it's easier to remember all the bits when we get bigger and bigger matrices. I go down whoosh, 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 and then whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. What was that? Was that me or y'all? Who knows? Okay. You think that was you? It was. Okay, that's fine. I don't really care. I just. Didn't know if it was something I was doing. Okay, so let's do an exa a quick example to go with this one. Is that minus? The it is minus. Cool. True facts. Uh, so the determinant of the matrix 4, 5, negative 3, 6 equals 4 times 6 minus... Negative three times five. Do you need something or are you stretching? It looks like an absolute value. It does look like an absolute value. It's not an absolute value. It's a determinant. Context clues. There are set. You wouldn't think context clues would be a thing in math, but it is several different times. For example, if I wrote this in math, it's not a bad thing. It's just a trig function. Okay. Okay. Although you could consider those the same thing. No. Very, sine is extremely useful. Sin is not. Okay. So, 4 times 6 equals 24. Negative, negative. We can ka-chink, ka -chink that now, right? Sounds great. 3 times 5 is 15. So, the determinant of this matrix is 39. Beautiful. Let's let you do one on your own, and then let's move on to bigger and better. What? That's okay. You got to push yourself. Um, it would be if if this usually. Like, say this was matrix A, you would write it as the determinant of A. That would be typical. Um, so, here's one for y'all to do. Find the determinant of 7, 5, Hello, machine. Yes. Nine minus four. Negative four, not minus four, sorry. Find the determinant. Ready, go.
wonder if the battery is almost dead in this. Again? It's a different pin. Possible. Can you recharge it? No, this one's not a rechargeable. They do make a rechargeable version of this pin, not the other crappy one I have, but. Can you get um, quadruple A? Can you get a quadruple A that can recharge? Like, probably, well, maybe, yeah, probably. Negative 73 is the answer. Good job, yes? Questions, no? I doubt it. Say what? Okay. I get a negative. Wait, what? How'd you know? It's negative. Did you did you get did you do it all up to this point, sir, or no? Uh, yes. So minus and so the so when they're the same sign, you subtract or you add and keep the sign. Just make sure it's the best in my humble opinion. Um which is maybe not so humble sometimes, but in my opinion, uh, it is best practice to let your brain handle the negatives and your calculator hand handle the numbers. Because that way, because then you're actually putting meat in the game and so learn those rules solid and do it that way instead of relying on your calculator to do the negatives. That's my opinion. Um, and I've found it to work well for me and others, so. If you don't know the rules, I have a video on EmberLearningLabs.com. Like, comment, and subscribe. No. <laughs> don't monetize me, YouTube. Okay. <laughs> that, that channel is definitely not monetized. It has like 20 subscribers. I subscribe. You did. So great. So sweet. <laughs> okay. So Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is awesome. Because Kramer's rule <laughs> lets you solve a system without even hardly thinking, but just doing like third grade math. Okay. Okay. Sometimes it takes longer, but it's easier almost always. <laughs> right? Okay, so Kramer's rule says if you have the system AX plus b y equals m and f x oh, <laughs> not f of x what am i writing f x plus g y equals n then we can write this matrix A, B, N, F, G, N. A, B, F, G. No, what you're talking about is a different way to solve all the system. It's also cool. So just okay. So we can write that matrix now, and then so to find the solution of the matrix, or excuse me, the solution of the system. We take the determinant. To find x, we switch the we switch the ones of these that go with x. So that would be a and f, right? We switch those with m and n. Okay, so we put m in and then b g. And then we put that over the, oh, this matrix is C. Put that over the determinant of C. And then for, this is, this gives you the, oops, the X. And then to get the y value, what do you think you're going to do? Uh, plug the x in. One of those. We're replacing m and n for the y ones is what we're going to do. Oops. And then it's still over the determinant of c. 
sort of kind of makes sense. Let's look at an example. What? It will when we put some numbers on it, probably. Okay. It does seem a lot longer. It really isn't actually much longer. It's in fact on a lot of times on a two by two system, it's the fastest way easily. Sometimes a three by three and bigger, it takes longer, depending. But it's much, and this you're going to like this about a three by system. It's much less likely to make careless mistakes because we all know that's the bane of doing three by three systems is accidentally missing a negative up there and then it breaks everything in the world and then your whole problem is, is wrong and your life is ruined and you have to be a hobo on the street. So, so we're going to solve the matrix 5x minus 6y equals 15 and 3x plus 4y equals negative 29. So our first step to solving it with Kramer's rule is we find the determinant of our C matrix. So the determinant of C, because we're going to reuse that for every turn. The determinant of C is the determinant of 5, negative 6, 3, 4. It is, in fact, negative 29. So the determinant of C is 5 times 4 minus 3, three times negative 6. So it equals 20 plus 18, which equals 38, right? Questions? No? Yes? Kind of we did that fast, but it's kind of baby math. So we just add those and add those and then did. Yes. Okay. Just put that one that way. Did it like regular. Okay. So that's our, our C. So now we need to find the values of our, our other two matrix matrices. What? What? Wait. I'm waiting, sort of. I'm listening. Yes. So, for x, we replace the, the um, x and y uh, numbers with the constant numbers, right? And you find that determinant. So, this would be, oops, not a good plan. For this top bit, oh gosh, I'm still doing it. <laughs> This would equal 15 times 4, right? From here. Mm -hmm. So 15 times 4 minus negative 29 times negative 6. So it's going to equal 60 minus uh, 29 times 6. What's 29 times 6? 174. Negative 174. Mm -hmm. So for x, it equals...
negative 114 over 38. Uh, what is negative 114 divided by 38? Negative three. So then we do the same process for y. But instead we're placing the y ones, so we're going to still leave five and three right here and put 15 and negative 29 right here. So five times negative 29 minus three times 15. So it's five times negative 29. Negative minus 45, mm -hmm. right? So that equals negative 190. And then we've got to divide that by 38 and then take that 38 and put it over here and actually do that. So 190, negative 190 divided by 38. This is negative 5 equals negative 5. So our answer is the ordered pair negative 3, negative 5. Makes sense. Questions? Yeah, it does have a lot of steps. It had 3. Took a I've got two brain cells. Wait till we get well then, <laughs> then if you have a smaller number of brain cells, this is the way you want to do it. Because it may it may take up more space, but it's very do this, then this, then this. The other, the other way, way is you have to think a lot more. I like this way then. This this way requires less thinking. This this way is very much just do these steps and we've got the answer. Okay, so we need to look at finding the determinant of a 3 by 3 system. Oh, well, that's why. It's because I accidentally skipped an entire page. That makes so much more sense. I was really confused. It's like, how is our textbook going to do that? Okay, yeah. So... Here's how to do a determinant of a 3 by 3 system. It's not any harder, it's just longer. We're still multiplying and subtracting. And that's still ultimately what we're doing. Just with more, more bits. Okay, so find the determinant of a 3 by 3 system. For a 3 by 3. Machine? You make me take a lot longer. You make me want to curse. Don't do it over the recording. Yeah, don't do Long it time. anywhere. You can you can keep from cursing if you choose to. But did you know? Here's a here's an interesting thought bubble for you. Did you know that if you hurt yourself, like smash your thumb with a hammer, and you yell an obscenity, did you know? that it actually has a physiological pain dampening effect, like for real, like they've actually studied that, it actually reduces the pain. Like it's not even just a thing, it's like, that's like, like not a made up thing, that's like real. Whether it's good or bad, or whatever else, or worth it, or whatever you want to say, that's, that's your own morality and whatever else, that's fine, you can make those decisions. But science says it helps the pain, which is interesting, if nothing else. Now, three by three system. So if we're trying to find the determinant of we're going to use an example. Um, 
We're going to use an, we're going to go straight to an example because it's going to be easier to see with actual numbers. So we're going to find the determinant of four negative eight three negative three two six negative four five nine. Yes. Step one, rewrite the first two rows outside. So in this example, four, negative three, negative four, negative eight, two, five. Step two. is multiply along the diagonals. So here, 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 and we add those up. So four times two times nine plus negative eight times six times negative four plus three times negative three times five. Makes sense so far? Yes? Okay. It's 10 o'clock. So, um, and this problem is going to take another, another 10 minutes probably to finish, five, 10 minutes. Um, well, actually, this one's just finding the term, so probably actually less than that. But in order to get somewhere where we're using this, it's going to take longer. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and give you your homework now. We'll, put, we'll switch this lesson into two days, and we will let you do two-by-two two stuff for homework. Okay. So your homework... Just think, y'all could be Algebra 1 and have to take a test today. Although, actually, this test y'all might rather take than doing this. <laughs> Pages 194 through 195. Numbers two, four, fourteen, sixteen, twenty six, and twenty eight, and forty, forty two, and forty four. 40, 42, 44. Oh, can we do that one too? Let me see. That might even be a good idea. Because it's an odd. I think That's really odd. No, no, no. And 47. No. I think we can do that one. I don't know. And it's not even five. But it's a word problem. Five is an honorary. <laughs> five is an honorary. Special <laughs> number. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. Because it's, it's, it's halfway through. Halfway there. Whoa. <laughs> that was exciting. 